Stairs. All four of them? All four of them. Brian Wingfield, uh, Emmeline Ross, William Ross and Brenda Jackson. They can't leave, I've posted my men. Mm. You must understand, Spectre, that the well-being of my patient comes before anything else. At the first sign of excitement or collapse, any indication that the experiment is having an adverse effect, I shall stop the proceedings. You understand that, nurse? Yes, Doctor. Quite so, quite so. I wouldn't expect anything else. But, Doctor, you don't think it's too risky? If I thought it was too risky, I should not permit the experiment. Mrs Wingfield's heart, pulse and temperature are all now normal. Uh, Nurse Bond, you are acquainted with the family. Go down to the waiting room and bring them up here. If they ask any questions, be strictly non-committal in your answers. Well... Go. Yes. Let's hope we have luck. Have any of them been allowed to see her? Her brother and sister, naturally, and also her husband. Um, Mrs. Wingfield has. Mrs. Jackson has not asked to see Mrs. Wingfield, nor asked to do so. Quite so. Uh, Doctor, you'll, you'll give them a little preliminary talk, will you? Uh, put them in the picture. Certainly, if you wish. I see that Mrs. Wingfield fell from the second story balcony. Yes. Yes, she did. Remarkable, really, that she wasn't killed. Dislocation of the shoulder, fracture of the right leg, and head contusions. Ah, Mr. Ross, good afternoon. Mr. Ross, will you sit down? Good afternoon, Mr. Wingfield. Well, you sent for us. It's not. It's not going to my wife, right? But there's no bad news, surely? No, Mr. Wingfield. There's no bad news. <sighs> Thank God. When you sent for us, I, I thought there might be a change for the worse. There is no change of any kind. Neither for the worse, nor alas, for the better. Is my sister still unconscious? She is still completely paralysed. She cannot move or speak. It's terrible. Simply terrible. Was Miss Jackson with you? Oh, she was following us. Oh, Dr. Ginsburg, my secretary. Miss Jackson. Good afternoon. Oh, poor Jenny. What a horrible thing to happen to anybody. Sometimes I feel you better if you killed outright by the fool. No, anything but that. I know how you feel, Brian, but this is a living death, isn't it, Doctor? There's still some hope for your sister yet, Mr. Ross. But, but she won't stay like this. I mean, she, she will get better, won't she? In cases of this kind, it's very difficult to forecast the nature of a patient. Her injuries will heal, yes. The bones will knit. The dislocation has already been reduced, and her head injuries are healing. Well, then why shouldn't she just be Jenny again in every way? We are touching on a subject which we are still very ignorant. Mrs. Wingfield's state of paralysis due to shock. The result of her accident. The accident was the ostensible cause, yes. What do you mean by ostensible? Mrs. Wingfield must have suffered some unusual fears before she fell from the second story balcony. It's not so much her physical injuries, but her mental state that would have caused this state of paralysis. Wait, you're not trying to say... No, no, no. You're not trying to say what I'm sure the inspector here has more or less been suggesting. That my wife tried to commit suicide. You know, I don't believe that for a minute. I never said I thought that it was suicide, Mr. Wingfield. Well, you know, you should think something of the kind, should you? Or else you and your people wouldn't keep hanging around like bloody vultures. Now, we have to be quite clear as to the cause of this 
accident. My God, isn't it simple enough? She's been feeling ill for weeks, feeling weak. She's taken for the first time, apparently the first time, goes on the balcony, leans over, loses the balance, falls to the ground. Don't get so excited, William. Don't shout. I know how you feel, buddy, but this business makes me all mad. How do you feel the police making over your family affairs? Bill, if anyone should be mad, it's me. And I'm not. What exactly have we been asked to come here for? One moment, Miss Jackson. Miss Ross, I wish you could tell me a little more about your sister. Was she at all prone to fits of melancholy and depression? She was always highly strung, nervous. Oh, I wouldn't say that at all. Men don't realise these things. I know what I'm talking about, and I think it is quite possible, Inspector, that her illness left her particularly low and depressed, and that was other things she had to worry and distress her. Miss Jackson, where do you think you're going? I'm leaving. I'm not one of the family, and I was asked to come here with the others, but if all you're going to do is go over and over again about the accident, whether it was an accident or an attempted suicide, well, I don't see why I should stay. Dr. Ginsburg will explain. Sit down, Miss Jackson. Dr. Ginsburg. I had better perhaps recapitulate what I know or have been told. Mrs. Wingfield has been suffering from an illness somewhat mysterious in nature. I was puzzling the doctor in attendance on her, Dr. Horsfield. This I have on the authority of Dr. Horsfield himself. She was, however, showing decided signs of improvement and was convalescent, though there was still a nurse in the house. On the day in question, exactly ten days ago, after seeing her patient had all she needed, Nurse Bond settled the patient in an easy chair near the open window, it being a fine, mild afternoon. She had some books and a small radio beside her. And about half past three, a cry was heard. Miss Ross, who was in the room below, saw a falling body cross the window. It was the body of Mrs. Wingfield, who had fallen from the balcony above. There was no one with her in the room at the time, but there were four people in the house. The four people gathered here today. Mr. Wingfield, would you mind telling us again, in your own words, what happened that afternoon? Well, I thought I should have told it often enough. I was correcting the proofs in my study. Then I heard a noise. It was a scream from outside. I rush to the side door, I go to the balcony, I lean over and I see, and I see Jen. Emmeline joined me a moment later, and then Bill, and then Miss Jackson. Emmeline phoned for an ambulance and I, I... Yes, yes, Mr. Wingfield, there's no need to go into any more. Miss Jackson, will you tell us your side of events? I had been asked to look up a reference in the encyclopedia for Mr. Wingfield. I was... I was in the library and I heard commotion and people running, so I dropped the book and joined them out on the terrace. And Mr. Ross? Oh, I was playing golf all morning. I played golf every Saturday. I'd come home, eaten a heart lunch, and I was feeling quite whack, so I went upstairs and laid in my bed. It was, it was Jenny's scream that woke me up. I looked on the, down on the terrace and there I saw them down below. I joined them not long after. Oh my God, do we have to go this again and again? I only wanted to stress the point that nobody who is in the house can tell us exactly what happened that afternoon. Nobody that is except Mrs. Wingfield herself. It was a perfectly simple accident on the side the entire time. Jenny thought she was stronger than she was, leaned down on the balcony and lost her balance. It could happen to anyone. Somebody brought to them with her, really. I blame myself for that. But she was supposed to rest in the afternoon, Brian. That was part of the doctor's orders. They were all going to meet her at half past four for tea, and she was supposed to rest every day from three o'clock until then. Miss Ross, the accident seems a little difficult to explain. The railings on the balcony did not give way. The railings are very low. I tested them myself. But Mrs. Wingfield is a very small woman. It would not be so easy for her to overbalance, even if she were taking giddy. I hate to say it, but I think you're right in what you suspect. I think poor Jenny was worried and troubled in her mind. I think a bit of depression came over her. You keep saying it like she tried to commit suicide, okay? I don't believe it. I won't believe it. She had plenty to make her depressed. And what do you mean by that? I think you know quite well what I mean. I'm not blind, Brian. Jenny wasn't depressed. She had nothing to be depressed about you. I've got a sick mind, Emmeline, and you're just imagining things. Leave my sister alone. It was an accident. Of course it was an accident. Miss Ross was just trying to. Yes, what am I trying to do? Women like you that write 
anonymous letters or poison pen letters just because no man has ever looked at you. How dare you! My God, women! Cut it out! Both of you! Right. I think we're all just getting a little overexcited here. We're all just saying things that are quite besides the point. What we want to really get at is what Jenny's state of mind was the day she fell. And now, I'm her husband. I know her pretty well. And I don't believe for a moment that she tried to commit suicide. That's because you don't want to think so. You don't want to feel responsible. Responsible? What do you mean responsible? For driving her to do what she did! How and dare you! That is why you want to speak to that! Please, quiet! When I asked you to come here today, it was not my object to provoke recriminations. Was it? I'm not so sure. No. What I had in mind was to conduct an experiment. Yes, we've already been told that, but we still don't know what kind of experiment. As Inspector Curry has just said, only one person knows what happened that afternoon. Mrs. Wingfield herself. And she can't tell us. It's too bad. She will when she's better. I don't think you quite understand the medical position here, Miss Ross. It may be months, it may even be years, before Mrs. Wingfield comes out of this state. Surely not. Yes, Mr. Wingfield. I won't go into a lot of medical details, but there are people who have gone blind as a result of severe shock, and have not regained their sight for 15 to 20 years. There are those who are paralysed and unable to walk for the same periods of time. Sometimes the shock precipitates the recovery, but there's no fixed rule. I don't understand what you're driving at, Doctor. You're about to find out, Mr. Wingfield. Nurse, do you mind? Yes. trying to do. As I have said, Mrs. Wingfield is completely paralysed. She cannot move or speak, but we are all agreed that she knows what happened to her that afternoon. But, but she's unconscious. She may be unconscious for, for years, you said. I did not say unconscious. Mrs. Wingfield cannot move or speak, but she can see and hear. I think it's highly probable her mind's as keen as it ever was. She knows what happened to her that afternoon. She would like to tell us, but she can't. You, you think she can hear us? You think she's trying to understand what we're trying to say to her, what we're all feeling? I think she knows. Jenny, darling, can you hear me? It's been terrible for you, I know, but everything will be all right. I said Mrs. Wingfield cannot communicate with us, but it is possible we have been found. Dr. Zalsbergen, a specialist in this form of paralysis, and who has been looking after Mrs. Wingfield, became aware of a very slight power of movement in her left hand. The left finger and thumb are able to move. It is very slight, hardly noticeable. She cannot move or lift anything, but she can slightly move the thumb and the left finger of her left hand. Dr. Lanson here has fixed up an apparatus of an electrical nature. You see, there is a small rubber ball. When pressed, it will appear a red light at the top of the apparatus. The slightest pressure will operate it. Now, I'm going to ask Mrs. Wingfield some questions. What do you mean questions? Questions about what? Questions about what happened that Saturday afternoon. This is your doing, isn't it? The experiment was suggested by Lanson and myself. But surely there's no way you can put a possible reliance on what might purely be a muscle spasm. I think we can soon find out whether Mrs. Wingfield can answer questions. No. I wouldn't let her go on with this. It's dangerous for her. It will set her recovery back. I think you must allow me to assure you that her health will be fully safeguarded. No, so the least sign of collapse, you know what to do. I don't like this. Well, of course, you don't like it. Do you? I think it might be interesting. Yeah, no, that's not fair at all to say. Quiet! Quiet! Yes. We must have absolute silence. The doctor's about to begin. Mrs. Wingfield. You have had a very narrow escape from death and are now well on the way to recovery. Your injuries are healing. We know that you are paralysed and cannot move or speak. But what I want from you is this. If you can understand what I'm saying to you, will you move your fingers and press the bowl? You have understood and heard what I'm saying to you? I think that it must be clear to you all that Mrs Wingfield can understand what I'm saying. Now what I propose is this. When the answer to a question is yes, you will press the bulb once. When the answer to your question is no, you will press it why? twice. Mrs. Wingfield, what is the signal for no? I think the 
then it must be clear to you all that Mrs Wingfield has understood what I'm saying to you and can answer my questions. Now, Mrs Wingfield, I'm going back to the afternoon of Saturday the 14th. Have you a clear recollection of what happened to you that afternoon? As far as possible, I will ask you questions that save you too much fatigue. I am assuming, therefore, that you had lunch and no spawn was settled you near the open window. You were alone in the room and were supposed to rest until 4.30. Am I correct? Did you, in fact, sleep a little? And then you woke up. You went out to the window. You lost your balance and fell. Just a minute, nurse. You fell. But you did not lose your balance. You were giddy, felt faint. Inspector, I hope you... <clears throat> what I propose is this. I will go through the letters of the alphabet. When I come to the letter of the word you need, press the button. Do you understand? I'll begin. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. You have given me the letter P. Mrs. Wingfield, I'm going to hazard a guess. Is the word that you have in mind pushed? I've got no, it's not true. Quiet, I don't know please, possible. I can't have the patient agitated. Mrs. Wingfield, you clearly have more to tell us. I'll begin again. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, M. That M is probably followed by a vowel. Which vowel, Mrs. Wingfield? A, E, I, O, U. And you. Mrs. Wingfield, I'm going to hazard a guess. Are you trying to tell us that some unknown person came into the house? Are you trying to tell us it was an attempted murder? This is outrageous, I tell you. This can't be true! She doesn't know what she's saying. I think she does. Mrs. Wingfield, was it someone inside the house who pushed you? Doctor, her pulse is quickening. Not much further, Doctor. We must have a name. Well, I'll go through the letters again, Mrs. Wingfield. A, B. You've given me the letter B? Doctor, she's collapsed. I oh, don't go on. It's no good. Give me the steriliser. Is she all right? She'll be all right, yes. She must rest for a while. We should take her near the open window. She'll be all right there. Well, there's not much doubt, is there? Who she meant? B. Not much doubt about that, is there, Brian? You've always hated me, Emily. You've always had it in for me, but I can tell you, I did not try and kill my wife. Jude and I were having an affair with that woman there. It's not true. Don't say that. You were head over heels in love with him. All right. Fine. I was in love with him. That's over. It was ages ago, but he didn't really love me. It's over. I tell you, it's all over. Well, then it appears odd you've stayed on as his secretary. I didn't want to leave. I... I still wanted to be near him. Perhaps you thought that if you got poor Jenny out of the way, you could console him very nicely and become Mrs. Wingfield number two. Emmeline, for heaven's sake! Perhaps it's B for Brenda. You horrible woman, I hate you. It's not true. B, Brian or Brenda, now it's down to one of you two, all right? I wouldn't say that. Could be B for brother, couldn't it? Or Bill. She always called me William. After all, who stands to gain from poor Jenny's death? And it's not me, I tell you. It is you. You and your sister. You two get our money after all. Please, quiet, please. I cannot have all this arguing. Nurse, will you assist them down to the waiting room? Yes, Doctor. We can't stay cooped up in this room slanging each other off all afternoon. Very well. You may run the hospital grounds as you please, but none of you is to actually leave the place. Is that understood? All right, yes. I have no wish to leave. My conscience is clear. I think you did it. What do you mean? You hate her. 
You've always hated her. And you get the money. You and your brother. My name does not begin with B, I'm thankful to say. No, but it needn't. Supposing, supposing that Mrs. Winfield didn't see who it was who pushed her into the balcony. But she told us she did. But supposing that she didn't, don't you see? Don't you see what a temptation it would be for her? She knew about me and Brian. So when that machine there gave her the, gave her the opportunity to get back at us, get back at me. It could have been like that. It could. Little far-fetched, Miss Jackson. No, it isn't. Not for a jealous woman. You don't know what women are like when they're jealous. She'd been sat in her room, cooped up, wondering, thinking, suspecting if Brian and I are still going on together. It isn't far-fetched, I tell you. It could easily be true. It is quite possible, Inspector. And you do hate her. Me? My own sister? I've seen the way you look at her often. You were in love with Brian. He was half engaged to you and Jenny came from abroad and cut you out. I know you've hated her ever since. You've not forgiven her. So, you came into her room that day. You saw her leaning over the balcony and it was too good an opportunity to miss. You came up behind her and you pushed her over. Oh, Miss Spectre, can't you stop this kind of thing? I don't know that I want to, Miss Ross. I find it all very informative. Nurse Bond, will you please escort them to the waiting room? Yes, Doctor. Miss Ross, would you mind waiting a moment? Well, what is it? There are some questions that I'd like to put to you about your brother, but I didn't want to embarrass him. Embarrass William? You don't know him. He has no self-respect at all. He's never ashamed to admit he doesn't even know where to turn for the next penny. That's very interesting, Miss Ross, but... It's actually your brother-in-law I thought might be concerned about the questions. Oh, Brian, what would you like to know? Miss Ross, you know the family very well. A woman of your intelligence would not be deceived as to what went on in here. You know the lives of your brother-in-law and your sister and what relations were like between them. Now, it is reasonable that up to this point you would say as little as you could, but Seeing as you know the circumstances have changed only a moment or two ago, well, that alters matters, doesn't it? Yes, I suppose it does. What would you like me to tell you? This affair between Mr Wingfield and Miss Jackson, was it serious? Not on his part. His affairs never are. You mean there actually was an affair? Well, of course. You heard her. She's going to admit it. You know this to your own knowledge? I could tell you various details to prove it, but I do not propose to do so. You'll have to take my word for it. Very well. It started when? Nearly a year ago. And Miss Wingfield found out about it? Yes. What was her reaction? She taxed Brian with it. And he? He denied it, of course. Told her she was imagining things. You know what men are. Lie their way out of anything. But... He, she wanted him to send the girl away, but he wouldn't. Said she was far too good a secretary to lose. But Mrs Wingfield was very unhappy about it. Very. Unhappy enough to want to take her own life? Not if she'd been well and strong. Her illness got her down. She got all kinds of fancies. What kind of fancies, Miss Ross? Just fancies. Miss Ross, why was Miss Wingfield left alone that afternoon? For some reason she preferred it. One of us always offered to sit with her, but she had her radio and her books. For some reason, she preferred to be alone. And whose idea was it to send the nurse off duty? Ah, oh, that's private nursing. That's standard practice. She would have had two hours off every afternoon. All right. And in reference to the affair between uh, Miss Jackson and Mr. Wingfield, uh, Miss Jackson says it was all over ages ago. Was that not the case? Perhaps they broke off for a while, or they were being more careful. But at the time of the accident, they were back on. Oh, yes. You seem very sure of that. Well, I lived in the same house, didn't I? In fact, I have something to show you. I found it at the big Ming vase on the hall table. It appears they were using it as a postbox. 
Darling, we must be careful. I think she suspects us from you. B. It's Brian's handwriting, all right. So, you see, do you mind if I ask a question or two, Inspector? Of course. Miss Ross, I'm interested in those fancies you mentioned. You had some particular fancy in mind, I think. It was just sick women's imaginings. She was ill, you see, and she felt she wasn't making the progress she needed to. She said so to you? She was just upset. She thought there was a reason for that. She thought the two of you were poisoning her. That's it, isn't it? Yes. She said so to you? Yes. And what did you say? I don't know what you mean. I, I, I just told her it was sick women's imaginings. And what actions did you take? What do you mean? Well, did you speak to the doctor attending on her? Take samples of her food? Of course not. It's just nonsense. Well, it happens more than you know. Right. Arsenic poisoning. It's almost always arsenic. These symptoms are practically indistinguishable from those of gastric disorder. Right, he, he couldn't, he just couldn't. She could. Well, I suppose. We'll never know now. No, that's where you're quite wrong, Miss Ross. There are always ways of telling. There are fibres in the hair and under the fingernails that can be tested. I, I don't believe, I don't believe to Brian. Inspector, do you need me any longer? No, Miss Ross. I'll keep this as evidence. Yes, of course. Well, we got something. The Ming vase in the hall. Interesting. It's his writing? Yes, it's Brian Wingfield's handwriting, all right. You know, he was quite one for the ladies. Fold them over like nine pins. Unfortunately, they always took him too seriously. It doesn't strike me as the Casanova type, writing all those history novels, very erudite. <laughs> There's quite a lot of dirt in history. So it wasn't all over. In yep. addition to what we had already, what did you have? Get four people all het up and accusing each other. Take a malicious and embittered woman and invite her to spill the beans. Gives on some material to work on, doesn't it? So there's more to the story? Well, I went into the financial angle. Brian Wingfield's a poor man. His wife's a rich woman. Now, her money came to her in trust. It's not for a very large sum, but enough for, her, enough for him to remarry if he wanted to. Now, if she dies childless, the money would be split between her brother and her sister. The brother's a wastrel, always begging his sister for the next penny, until one day, Brian tells me, he, she said, no more. She wasn't going to pay him. Though, I dare say she would have done, in the end. So which is it? B for Brian, B for Brother Bill, Emmeline without a B? Emmeline... Emmeline without the Emmeline? Wait a minute. It was something they said. They were... it was, it was this afternoon. They were all hidden here. They were... they were bickering. No. No, it's gone. Could it be B for Burglar? No, that's definitely out. We've got conclusive evidence on that point. We had a constable positioned in front of the house. The front and side gate were directly under his eye. Nobody entered or left the house that afternoon. You know, you asked me to cooperate, but you've been very careful not to put your cards on the table. Come on, what do you think? It's not a question of thinking, Doctor. I know. What? Well, at least I think I know. You think it over. You've got seven minutes. What? Ah, yes. Mrs. Wingfield, thank you for your help. We've come now to the crucial point in the experiment. Mrs. Wingfield, we are about to leave you here, apparently unguarded. None of the suspects know that you have, in fact, regained your powers of speech since yesterday. They also don't know the fact that you are unaware of who pushed you off that balcony. Do you realise what this means? One of them, one of them will try to... Someone will almost certainly enter this room. Are you sure you want to go through with this, Mrs. Wingfield? Yes, yes, I must know, I must know who... It's all right, we should be close at hand. Just remember if anybody approaches you or tries to touch you... I know what to do. Thank you, Mrs. Wingfield, you're a wonderful woman. We only need you to be brave for a few moments longer, then we shall trap our killer. 
I'm ready. Right. Inspector, in light of these new poisoning allegations, perhaps you'd like to take a look in my office at the files once more. Yes, and I'd like another look at those x-ray plates too, if I may. Help! Help! It's all right, Miss Swingfield, we're here. Help! Murder! Is she all right? Yes, she's all right. You've been very brave, Mrs. Wingfield. Thank you. Mrs. Wingfield, that note in the Ming vase was all I needed. Brian Wingfield didn't have to write secret notes to a secretary he saw every day. No, he wrote those notes to someone else. And that constable on duty, he swears that nobody entered or left the house that afternoon. So, you didn't go for your off-duty walk that day, did you? You may come out from behind the contraption now, nurse Bond.